Hey, what's up? Real quick, are you busy on this really important day of your life? Okay, bet. I got this gig, man. I need you on this gig. And don't worry, it's super, super easy. We're only going to do two sets and uh, maybe 16 to 20 songs. You, you, But the songs you already know. I mean, it's, it's easy stuff for you. Oh, yeah, before I forget, the budget is only like $100. You cool? Bruh. Really? Now, does this conversation sound familiar to you at all? Chances are, if you're a musician, you've had this conversation more than once, and we're going to deal with it today. And today, also, I want to give you five tips on helping you to navigate these types of conversations and also help you to make a better informed decision on moving forward in your career. So be sure to hang around all the way to the end, because the last point, you're not going to want to miss. So stay tuned. So since I've been a musician, this is something that's always come up off and on throughout my career with various musicians talking about these $100, $150, some people $75 gigs. And recently I was scrolling through my Facebook feed and the topic had come up again amongst some pro musicians that I know. And it's like one of these things, I wouldn't go chime in on it, but I was like, you know what? This is a good topic to talk about because apparently it keeps happening. It keeps coming up and this thing is apparently not going to go away anytime soon. So what can we do about it? So here are five things from my perspective you can start doing to make the situation a little bit different for you. For tip number one, know what your goal is. All right, so for me, I've done $50 gigs, $75 gigs, $100, $150, $200 gigs on up. But a lot of the gigs that I would do for little to no money, and some of these were zero dollar gigs that I would do, it was for the purpose of networking. I was trying to build a community, so to speak, with the uh, neighboring musicians or with the community of musicians that were around me so that hopefully they would call me for something else. Or so I thought that was the reason I was doing it for. In a sense, it was kind of to put my name in these people's mind because it's like, out of sight, out of mind. And not only that, when you come to a new city, it's like you have to pay your dues, so to speak, in the musician community. You have to prove that you can do the thing that you say you can do. People got to peep your character out, all these different things. Sometimes this even happens in the church world where you have to do something for a little bit of nothing in terms of getting the reps in, paying your dues, as some would call it, uh, in order to do the necessary networking so you can get called for the bigger gigs. So in my regard, one of the primary goals for me was networking. The other goal was, hey, I need the money. I'm broke. <laughs> so I would do a lot of these gigs just to get the little extra money. I had the time. I was much younger. I didn't have as many responsibilities. So to go knock out a little $100 gig here and there, and maybe I have five, six of those a week, make five, $600, off these little 100 $150 gigs, oh, that's easy work. So it wasn't that big of a deal early on in my career because, you know, I'm just trying to build my name up. I'm trying to build my chops up. I'm trying to get uh, within the network of musicians. So for that purpose, that's not a bad thing. So if you're finding yourself at that point of the scale where you just came into the game and you're trying to do the networking situation, that's not necessarily a bad thing to do the $100 gig. You just simply have to know what your goal is in terms of why am I doing this? And oftentimes I found myself in my latter years of being a pro musician, I've done gigs for a little bit of no money, but oftentimes that's been simply just to brush off my chops. You know, something, hey, this is on a day that is not inconvenient for me. I don't have anything else going on on this day. And the musicians that I'm gonna play with, it's rewarding. Like, I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with these cats. Now, I'm not saying this is a $100 gig now, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with these cats and I enjoy the fellowship or the brotherhood, so to speak, of these musicians that I'm playing with. So it might be a church, it might be this, it might be that, and I'll come do the gig for little to no money just for the sake of fellowshipping and having fun with the musicians or the community. I feel like I need to dust my chops off and I'll do this gig. So again, it comes down to whatever the goal is for you. All right, so for tip number two, how much will it cost you? This is a question that you wanna ask. Now, many times in my career, I've accepted gigs. And as I begin to progress as a professional musician, I had to start counting up the cost of what these things are costing me, especially after I got married. I started having kids. I got way more responsibilities and I see my time is being pulled. Now I got to start considering. OK, as I said in the beginning of the video, we got a hundred dollar gig with two one hour sets and we have to learn 16 to 20 songs. So well, the main thing I have to do is factor in okay how far is this gig away from my house 
all right that's one of the things i want to think about um how much gas is this going to cost me you know if this i'm driving an hour an hour and 45 minutes from my house for some of these gigs depending on where i live if it's not nearby i got to factor in the amount of gas i'm going to need and if this gig starts at let's say the gig starts at seven o'clock in the evening well i got to do a sound check so most of the time they're going to want you to be there like you know five o'clock for sound check how far do i live away from this gig just say i live an hour from this gig uh this is going to be rush hour traffic depending on if it's during the week so I have to leave an extra 30 to 45 minutes earlier just to beat the traffic to get there at 5 p.m. So let's say I'm leaving my house at 3 o'clock for the 7 o'clock gig. So I'm going to have to eat. I'm going to have to put in gas. And not only that, leading up to the gig, I'm going to have to learn these songs. How much time is it going to take away from something else that I could be doing to learn these 16 to 20 songs? Because here's the thing. A lot of times you get these cats that'll tell you, oh man, it's gonna be super easy. You know these songs. How do they know you know these songs? They don't know what your catalog is. But oftentimes, I call this stuff convention talk, musician talk. Now this is time I have to take from other things I could be doing, like recording, like making videos, like other things that I personally do to earn me money. I gotta consider all these things that this is gonna be taking me away from. Even my family, my time with my family to learn this mu music that I don't know. All right, and so now we get there for five o'clock and so you have three o'clock and let's say the gig is over at 9 9 30 you still got a breakdown so that's 10 o'clock so from three o'clock to 10 o'clock at night is roughly seven hours of your life that you're giving away for this gig how bad did you want to do this gig you know what i'm saying is this something that you really want to do so now you got to factor in if i really even wanted to do this gig i don't know what it's like for you guys but in the states gas is well above three dollars right now <laughs> where i'm at so you're gonna spend you know 50 to 75 bucks on a fill up easy so if the gig only paying a hundred dollars well i got 50 to 75 dollars in that in gas right that's not even counting or factoring in a rehearsal if they call you out for a rehearsal you gotta pay for gas for that if you eat you're gonna spend 10 to 20 bucks on eating so you ate up all your profit right there in trying to get to the gig and trying to make sure you had food so now we have to really sit back as musicians and look at it and say does this really make sense for me to go do this 100 dollars because i spent nearly a hundred dollars of my own money for this gig this is simply counting up the cost for point number three how much value do you add now this is a touching one that most musicians aren't gonna like this i'm gonna tell you this before i even start talking most of you guys are not gonna like this one because it's gonna cause you to be honest with yourself when you get into situations you need to know the type of value you bring to the situation because most of us can easily be replaced somebody can come in there and play the bass part that you're playing because let's be honest it's cool but it's not spectacular so they could easily get somebody else to come in and fill your your spot right so when we look at the amount of money that we want to be paid versus the amount of value that you're adding you might say well i put years into my craft and trust me i'm with you i put years into this I put time into this and so I know that I'm going to come in here and deliver, I'm going to play these songs, I'm going to knock these songs out of the park. Well that's good from your perspective but you have to look at it from the other person, the uh, employer or whoever is ca calling you in for this gig. A lot of times they have other people standing in line who's ready to take your spot, who can do it just as well as you do. So now you have to ask yourself the question, what type of value do I add? And if this is a recurring gig for you, if you go to your employer and tell them, yo, I think this ain't working out for me, I, I'm going to have to find me something else to do. Now, being honest with yourself, are they going to stop you and say, you know what? No, no, no. Let's see what we can do. How can we work this out for you so we can keep you here? Or are they going to tell you, hey, don't let the dough hit you or the good Lord split you? These are questions that you have to ask yourself and be honest about it. Just say it's, if it's a, um, you know, a restaurant type gig or a um, club, for lack of better words, a club gig. And you're playing this gig and you know because of your band and the value that your band brings to this venue, you're bringing this person a potential four, five, six hundred extra dollars just in people showing up and buying food and all these different things because you're getting people into the building you're attracting people well now you're adding value to this establishment or just say if it's a church and i'm i hate to say it this way but we got to deal with it if it's a church and you know what you do the music department is so much better because you're there and more people come to hear the music department. even though they shouldn't they're coming to hear the music department because what you bring to the table has made the department so much better you know this as a fact 
and this can be proven, then you have grounds to negotiate a better payment or a better pay rate for this thing. Point number four, question number four, are you doing too much? We have to be careful. I, had, I heard Eric Thomas say this on the Secret to Success podcast. He was talking about sometimes you might be doing too much. And what do I mean by that? You might be working beyond the employers or the people who are paying you. You might be working beyond their ability to pay you. So here's what I mean. You're coming in there. You're over doing stuff like you're building tracks, building Ableton sessions or, or whatever. You know, you got tracks. You're bringing in extra band members. You're doing over and above to make sure that the music and presentation is excellent as you should. But when we do these things, we have to make sure that we keep in mind, look, nobody asks you to do all of that. I ask for at least a three piece band to come in here and make sure we have some music for these people to enjoy this particular situation even if it's your church your church has already told you look we can only give you 10 20 thousand dollars a year so you already know there's a cap there there is no more money to give you even though you might have your opinion about what they should be or shouldn't be doing with the money it doesn't matter they have already told you up front hey this is what we got this is what we can pay take it or leave it but you decide because the music isn't where it should be i'm going to implement all these things i'm going to implement ableton i'm going to implement studio one i'm going to build out tracks i'm going to work through the week make sure the choir sounds good and it's excellence on your part but here's the thing you might be doing too much if you're expecting here's the catch if you're expecting for them to reward you for what you're doing they've already communicated to you from the jump hey this is what we have this is what we're paying you so now if you didn't have the conversation with them now you're just assuming that they're going to look at all your good works and just start giving you more money and that was never part of the deal for them so now you walk away hurt and offended because all of the things you did to add value to the situation and they don't look at the value you're adding and so now you feel offended well you set yourself up for that fail you have to be clear going in hey these are the skills that I offer and negotiate from the gate. Tell them, look, these are the skills I offer. I know you might be hiring me to be a bass player or a keyboard player, drummer, whatever it is. But here are some additional things that I can do to enhance your service. Is there a way that we can negotiate a price for these additional things that I do and I bring to your situation, your establishment, your service? And if they say yes, now you got some room to negotiate. If they say no, now you have a choice to make. Either I'm going to do all this extra stuff, I'm going to leave it alone. And so in essence, that saves you from all the headache and the heartache that you're going to feel because you did all this extra work and nobody is noticing it. So you want to know how much value you add to the situation and ask these questions. So really quick, I want to let you guys know if you're somebody who's trying to learn gospel based and you're trying to improve your playing, your overall aggressiveness, being more aggressive, learning the different styles of music, maybe learning the hymns, maybe learning a congregational song. You might even be struggling with how to play shout music and all of that kind of stuff. If you're somebody who struggles with these types of things, I want to help you and I want to help you to grow your skills as a bass player. Not only that, if you're struggling with coming up with licks and riffs and that, those types of things, I want to help you uh, figure it out. So I encourage you to check out the link in the description below or visit JermaineMorgan.net and there I have a ton of lessons that you can uh, check out. I have a ton of courses specifically geared towards bass players who are trying to improve in gospel and a ton of other areas. But if that's where you need help, let me help you by visiting JermaineMorgan.net. Now for point number five, as I promised, this is the one you're going to really want to think about. How can you create more value? If you know the people who are hiring you only have a capped amount of money, no matter what you do, you're going to only be able to make a certain amount of money. So if they're saying, we're going to start you out at $30,000 a year and we're going to cap you off at about $35,000, that means no matter what you do, you're not going to get higher than that. So now you have to start thinking outside of the box. What can I do to create value? Now, in my book, 10 Ways to Success, I've talked a lot about some different things that we can do as musicians to create value for ourselves. And I'll give you one of the things, for example. Now, personally, in my own life, I started asking these questions many years ago, and I started trying to figure out ways that I could create value because Personally, my own convictions wouldn't allow me to do these $100, $150 gig, not because of the money, but because of the environment. Some of the environments that I was exposing myself to, I wasn't happy with the environments. So I had some decisions to make. Hey, either you're going to continue to do this gig 
for this amount of money in this environment or you're going to come up with something else because hey i'm a pro musician i got to make money some type of way so what i started doing i started looking at hey what else can i do creating my own situations creating my own scenarios creating records uh as an artist you know i'm recording and selling my own music i started giving lessons i started doing tons of things and again i list out uh, a number of these things that i did in my book to start creating and generating money and income for myself but the biggest thing you want to do is create assets however that looks for you you have to create assets now the asset for you could be a course the asset for you could be an online video lesson the asset for you could be an album the asset for you could be a number of things in terms of you generating wealth for yourself and for your family now it might start small there's a verse Zechariah 4 and 10 that says do not despise small beginnings when you start you might start small the asset that you have might be something that's like a little $20 asset but if you continue to add to those assets then over time, they will turn into something that's very profitable for you. Just to share with you guys, just the other day on my website, there was a sale that came through for about $570 for something that I created, for a product that I created. And somebody came onto the website and bought this particular product while I was doing something else. Now, this is an asset that I created, or assets rather, that I've created over time that have allowed me to have something in place where people come to purchase those assets. Now, this is something that I've done by research and looking at my own life and looking at the value that I have to add to people that I was able to create something that costs, you know, $570 where somebody can come on the site and purchase this. Now, this makes up five, six, $100 gigs, right? So now I'm not going out and gigging. I'm working on the front end and creating stuff that allows me to reap the benefits on the back end. So these are some things you want to think about. It might not be a course for you. It might be a rental service for you. It might be tons of things. Again, get the book. I'm talking about some of this stuff in the book and I encourage you guys to check it out. Now, if these things have stirred your thought process up, be sure to drop it in the comments because I'm interested to hear. Some of you guys might be doing an implementing some of these strategies that I'm talking about already. Some of you guys might be asking some of these questions. If I miss some questions and you feel like people need to ask some of these other questions based on some of your experiences, drop them in the comments. Let's have dialogue. Let's talk about these things. Let's figure out what we can do in the musician community to make life better for us and our families and ultimately enjoy what it is we create and what we do as musicians without compromising the integrity of who we are and what we stand for. All right, so this is it for me today. I know this was a long video, but I felt like it was a necessary conversation. Again, I welcome your feedback in the comments. This is some dialogue we need to have. Maybe I need to come back and revisit with another video, but it's going to be depending on what I hear you guys talking about in the comment section. And so I appreciate you guys for hanging out with me today. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, be sure to do that. And again, I'm Jermaine Morgan and I'm out, guys. Peace.